All right, and we are live. We're here. We made it, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday to you all. Uh, happy coffee break. This is Coffee Break. I'm Spencer Campbell. Uh, every Sunday morning, I like to hang out with one of my friends in the RPG scene and just hang out and chat. And it's not an interview show. It's just whatever we feel like talking about on the Sunday. <laughs> it's a nice way to, like kickstart my week for inspiration i think what i found every week so far is that i leave with like wanting to do something not to put a shit ton of pressure on you all of a sudden adam to like inspire, to inspire me inspire. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's sort of the the premise behind why i do this so like i said i'm spencer uh but i am joined here by the wonderful adam bell adam uh would you mind introducing yourself to folks yeah uh like you said i'm adam bell i am a game designer I make some games. Um, you can get those or follow me on Twitter. Just go to either Adamy Bell on Twitter or adamybell.games for my itch page. Um, I do other things. I do like the Tabletop Colin show on Mondays Hell at 11. Yeah. So if you like hearing me talk, uh, you'll love hearing me talk with Jeremy, Jeremy Gage. It, that show oh. is exactly at the same time as a class that I teach. So I always get oh, the, no. like, the go live and I'm like, Maybe today I just won't have class. But you thankfully, just cancel the class. Right. Tomorrow's the last day of the term. So then, like, after tomorrow, I can start watching live again. And I'm so excited for that. Because yeah. I love the Tabletop Call in show. Uh, it's very fun. You two bring a very fun energy together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's only got, that's only gotten better, which is nice. Because when we first started, like, we were friends, but not, uh, you know, it was we were new friends, but right? Like in this rebooted version, oh, Jeremy's in the chat. I think I could say that Jeremy and I have gl grown into closer friends, which uh, is better TV. That's Jeremy. Is that Jeremy's <laughs> Twitch name? Chuckle is yeah. Jeremy. Yeah. Oh. oh, was I not supposed to reveal <laughs> that? <laughs> reveal. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Jeremy Gage. Hides under the, the alter ego of Shuckle. Very good. Uh, yeah, I love that show. And you've also been making videos. I, I, I was watching your... So I've been packing. I've just been packing and packing Nova stuff. And I was watching the last couple of your... Don't call it Vlogmas videos uh, <laughs> on RPGs. And those have been really cool too. Yeah, yeah. I've been... It's like every December I get the urge to make videos. Um, and But this is like the first December where I don't have a job to suck my energy away. I just do game stuff. So it's been it's been going pretty good this past week. That's very cool. Do you I'm, I'm curious about this because um, do you have it like planned out what you're going to do for the whole month? Or is it just like on a day no. by day? You're just going to figure out whatever inspires you. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fully day by day. Uh, I just knew I wanted to do it. And so I made that first video to announce it. And I was thinking I was going to do have some sort of meta narrative between them all. And that's mm. still on the table. So that's what the weird stuff at the beginning of that video was. It would have made sense if I continued. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, I, I made the like why you should play RPGs and how to pick one. And those two both felt more standalone. Like I didn't want to dilute that with some weird meta narrative that you gotta yeah. go, go watch 10 other videos because <laughs> those two should be here in the future for people to like watch and send to their friends or whatever right yeah they're <laughs> like super cool resources i i um because i teach the i teach a class on psychology of rpgs and it's a it's like a once a, it happens one weekend every term it's just like a workshop class but most of my students who take that class don't know what an RPG is, um, <laughs> which makes it a really interesting class. Because I, I basically say, like, okay, none of you have any idea what this is. If I asked you to pretend to be a wizard all weekend, would you be cool with that? Like, are you okay <laughs> with that? Because now's your chance to, like, escape if you don't want to do that. Um, but I think this video will be a much easier way to like introduce the concept to them. If I send that ahead of time, be like, just watch this so you know what you're getting into. <laughs> so that I'm not blindsiding you on Friday afternoon, like, okay, everybody strap in. We're getting into some real weird shit. <laughs> well, that'd be, yeah, that's great if that's useful in that capacity. Um, it's one of those things I never know because I know what I know, but I never know what other people know. And so, like, me talking about something I know 
that that might just be something everybody knows right until you see like a reaction and then it's then it's nice to be like oh this is helpful <laughs> well it's when you like when you're talking about how like just like the initial description of what an rpg is like trying to explain that to somebody and going like hey remember when you were a kid and you did make believe like i now will use that going forward just to explain <laughs> what this is just because that's so much more straightforward and it's so a like universal experience that folks had mm. growing up so i could just be like you used to pretend to do things when you were a kid we're just doing that with a interesting framework or a set of rules to go with it uh and i think that will help transfer it'll bridge that gap a little bit cleaner cool yeah it's neat stuff you're doing neat <laughs> stuff adam that's what i'm trying to say hey thanks yeah we'll see like I said, I, I don't have any of it planned, so I'd like to keep doing more helpful things. I keep sitting down to be like, I'm going to finally recommend some games, but then there's just so much to say before that. Yeah. And there are other people that are doing great stuff with recommended games, so like I don't necessarily need to get involved there. Trying to figure out the thing that you want to like uniquely bring or the some idea yeah. that like you, you can bring in. I, I mean, I just love listening to you talk to get, talk about games. So whatever <laughs> you put out, I will listen to. Like when you awesome. and Jeremy just, even when you're just like shooting the shit about the games that you're working on or talking about, like it is cool stuff. And I'm one of those people, like I said, I haven't been able to watch the Tabletop Colin show uh, live. So I've been listening to the podcast stream and listening to you two play out your your tactical grid system <laughs> was so fucking funny. As Jer How is that as an audio experience? I have to know. <laughs> well, as an, you know, I'm doing my best to try and map it in my head. I'm driving too, so I'm not like... <laughs> You're not trying to map too hard. I'm not trying to map, to map too hard. because <laughs> Exactly. So I'm like trying to keep up, but I mostly just keep breaking because of what... Like Jeremy's just the absolute power gamer in that scenario yeah, and it was fully on one <laughs> <laughs> trying to make me lose it and it like <laughs> it made me think back to other times that i've like play tested things and had players like that and i'm like this is not helping the test i understand <laughs> what you're doing but this is not how this works and it was it was so funny it was so funny so uh even though I couldn't see it in my head or see it in my head or see it with my eyes, I still enjoyed the experience. Oh well, yeah, we should get some links to that stuff. Um, Navi, hmm. I will make sure that I get links to all of that uh, and throw it up into the chat shortly. So that's what you do on Mondays. You've been making yeah. these videos. Um, you make games. Have you been like? Oh, you've been working. I know. I remember what I wanted to talk to you about because you you sent a picture of a a prototype of a card box of a card game you're working on, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have it. It's just still sitting on my desk. Oh my god! Look I at have, it. And this is just made out of paper. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> so like, it's falling apart right. immensely. <laughs> but that. yeah, so it is. It's the. Whoa, I forgot I have cubes in here. They're just spilling out now. Ooh. Um, it's. I haven't decided on the cubes yet, but I'm using I'm gonna be using like the Game Crafters hook box. Yeah. Which you know folds out like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm like watching myself on the stream, so I'm yeah. second spine. <laughs> I don't know what anybody can see. It folds out like this, and then I've just got all the rules on those like it on the inside and on those flaps. Nice. Um and it was it's kind of a fun format to play with, actually. Cause it was like, how do I write these condensed enough? Because I'm kinda You've watched me talk. I yeah. just kind of keep going, and that's how I write, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so, super yeah, cool. It, it was cool. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Do you, I, like, I got lost. I don't, but I don't think I've seen, and maybe uh, maybe I've just missed it, but like, I don't know what this game is. I just saw you post the picture of it. Is this something you've been talking about, or is this something you're just what? like, here's a thing that I've got? It's a thing that I have talked about, but okay. not in any big way. Like, so you didn't miss it. I didn't it. miss the it's big probably, reveal. Probably in some, like, <laughs> some Discord, I have mentioned right. it. <laughs> this is why I haven't seen it then, because I just don't do Discord anymore. I do mine barely, yeah. and then that's it. <laughs> it's just too much to keep up with there. It's. I mean, Which that's is... literally why I made this show, because I was like, I used to like be in connection with so many cool people, and I just cannot 
keep up with them in different like 10 different discords so i will just yeah. ask them to sit down with me <laughs> and check in so uh the game starts with this oh i gotta pull up my own webcam so i stop i keep looking over to the stream to be like oh, am i it... showing am i showing it and then it's so the game starts with this this is like the first card uh and this is a storyline and basically it'll build up uh different cards I don't know why I wasn't prepared to do this. Well, I, sure. I did. We we prepared <laughs> nothing, so I just came it's in true. here hot. Like, tell me about your card game. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could just talk. So, uh, here's here's like a snippet of once you get three storylines, which is the max. So they're going to be like crisscrossing, and the dots are where a storyline start starts. This is where it ends. So, like, the, it would have come from you know yeah. the side there. Um, and the idea is each storyline is going to be like one myth in a larger mythos that you're building uh and each storyline is also going to be pulling from like one real book oh. so each round basically you add a new card to the timeline to see you know which storylines are ending which are continuing if you're starting any new ones and then you're also generating like a page number a paragraph number and a sentence number and so you know each player is going to be responsible for like one of the books on any given round and you read the sentence and then you're like how does that fit into my story this weird out of context prompt from this yeah. book yeah that's that's just such a cool <laughs> cool oracle engine cool mythos building engine that is unbelievably cool i dig that I can see that like as a full, uh, like a really fun thing to just to play on its own. I can see it being used as like a really neat tool for like world world like a pre session zero sort of thing right. or part of a session yeah. zero sort of thing. That's rad. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about it. It was one of those things where I sat down. I was like, I'm. I would just want to make a card game, mm -hmm. which I I think you can relate to. Yes, you're making a card yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. I, think I saw right before we got on. <laughs> That's why I that's why I wanted to talk to you about it so bad. I was like, I have that itch, that craving in me right now. <laughs> and so I sat down and was like, what can I do with a card game that's also an RPG? And I just started drawing these funny lines that are crisscrossing. And then it was like, well, what what is that? What is mean? this? And then I started like writing prompts and I was like, if I'm only given like 20 cards, that's not enough prompts, I don't think, for mm -hmm. this. So then it was, oh, grab books. Yeah. There's so many cool things in books. <laughs> That's awesome. That's very, very rad. There's like a few folks who are RPG designers who are suddenly like making other, like I think Math Matthew Gravelin's making like a roll and write game right now. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I've got a card game. You've got a card game. A few other people are just like, what if we just did other things too right now? And I think that itch is like moving around, which is neat. I've, cause that's how I started. Like I don't, I, I didn't start by making role playing games. I started mm. by trying to make board games and card <laughs> games and not getting anywhere. Uh, and then yeah. I shifted, but now I kind of want to like return to that just for like, not a, not a deep dive. I'm not about to go make a, a brand new board game anytime soon. I say that as I'm making a faction turn, which is absolutely a board game, but yeah, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm like back into that mode right now and I'm very much, very much into it. Yeah. I'm secretly a board game designer. I think. I just have also stumbled into RPG design as something that is like a way different, but also the same mm -hmm. thing. Um, but also RPG design is more, I want to say approachable. Yeah. That, because I, it, <laughs> you, it's easier to get a book made than a box of bits because the box of bits costs so much money and you need like most of the big manufacturers, you need at least 2000 in order for them to 2000 copies in order for them right. to look at you and like, I'm not selling 2000 of anything. <laughs> right. And my my biggest hang up with and this is the, the this has been the, the the big transition for me from board games to role playing games is that with board games they have to function straight out the box ready to go no modifications yeah. like <laughs> I mean there will always be house rules for games but like if there's any element of balance that's important to the game it has to be balanced out of the box. Like that stuff has to be done. So it requires so much more testing, so much more planning of all of that stuff. And now, you know, I write board, I wrote role, 
write role playing games that literally say this is not balanced. There will be <laughs> no balance discussion here. And right, because even even if you go to like a non balanced board game, like I don't know if you've ever played Cosmic Encounter. Yeah, that's that's the game where like inherently it's it's completely unbalanced. But that is the balance, and you could like you can't just make a game and say it's unbalanced and it's fine. Like it has to be intentional, as weird and zany as Cosmic Encounter, where the players balance it. Um, yeah, because everything in a board game is like it's a complete experience, but it's also on like on rails to use RPG terms. Right. So it has to like you're saying, it has to function out of the box. The the designer kind of has to give you all of the tools for the whole experience. Whereas with an RPG, you give the tools that like lay the foundation of an experience. And that's also hard. Like it's not I'm not trying to say that right. <laughs> us making RPGs, we took the easy way out. <laughs> it's just a way different set of challenges right. uh, that I've been finding are very interesting. So it's, here I am. <laughs> my my style of writing. So you mentioned that you you just like you will write and write and write uh, when you're like over or over like over explain something. For me, I like under explain or I just leave massive holes in my text for people to like interpret, which is <laughs> not how you're supposed to write a board game rule book. No. So yeah. <laughs> like, but that's right. Like people love that for an RPG, right? So but... It's like a great stylistic choice there. If you can't. But if you can't turn it off, it's tough to do the, right. the board game where it's like, what do I do I've, when I move my cube here? Right. I've I've pulled up my old uh my old card game that I started two years ago, like before the pandemic, and I was doing um you know, play testing with people in person and everything. What a time. Uh <laughs> and looking at my rule book, I opened it up, I'm like, this is like it's there's nothing like there's not nearly enough here to understand and i'm using different keywords throughout every single card so like sacrifice destroy kill i'm like these are all the same thing but i'm not using like the same keywords and i'm like <laughs> i have learned even though i don't write very specific with my role playing games i have learned mostly through having people like will edit my games to learn how to like be more um I don't know, decisive with my words or something <laughs> like that, rather than just like, uh, you, you, you get it, right? Like you, you, you get it. Uh, I can't, that, I can't write like that. That is, I can write like that, fortunately. But I mean, that comes for me from doing seven years of like technical customer support, mm. where I'm like craft. I have a finely tuned craft, and this is a bad thing for writing fun to read games. Right. But a finely tuned craft of emailing people that I don't really care about complex topics and hoping they never email me back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's concise enough, concise but unhelpful enough that they can figure it out for the rest of them themselves. Right. <laughs> And, and then, not and then be gone. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The word I was looking for is consistent. Yes. Having a good consistent approach to how you're writing things. And then Dimitri mm. says, I also think an RPG creator can get more creative when writing. I definitely had a lot more fun reading TTRPGs than board games. Yeah. Right. Like sitting down and reading a role playing book is fun to me. Even if I never play the game, like just sitting down and, and reading the book is fun. I don't read board game manuals for fun. <laughs> I do. Oh, I, I still read those. <laughs> but it's it's because in my like board game group, I'm usually the one that uh, get gets the game. If I'm not the one that gets the game, I'm still like, here. How do we play this? Yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, I'll figure it out. You're don't the worry. teach. Got it. Give me ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um... I am unfortunately that that role. Uh, are you also when you do role play also the uh, forever GM as a result too? Is there? I'm wondering if there is a correlation between people who are always the person who has to be the teacher <laughs> or like the person who like wrangles people for board game night, and that person is also the person who has to GM things if if it's a GM game. Yeah, well, I'm at the very least, I'm the one that's like, hey, uh, instead, because board game is the default for my group. Right. Uh, and so it's, I'm usually the one that's like, let's do, we're doing an RPG today. Come over if you want to play an RPG. Don't, right. <laughs> I don't say don't if you don't, but that's, <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> it's the implication. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but I, I mean, I just get around that by playing GMless games. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's the secret. Uh, but, no, I have one friend that 
uh, he's been running a 5e campaign that i'm in for i think we're on six or seven years holy shit and it's ending because he knows he's known for the past like two years that i don't like 5e <laughs> <laughs> And so he's not like we've been driving it towards the end, um, but you know it's it's tough to schedule, so you don't make that yeah. much progress any given month. Um, so he is a GM, and right? Like, I think he said he's going to run root the root RPG next once oh, we're done. Which okay. so that's nice. Like, appreciate that. But yeah, he doesn't like. He refers to the story game scene, including the games that I make, as those games, right? <laughs> Uh, and he'll play any of them once to see if he likes it. Okay. And he's great at playing them. He's a blast to play them with. And then he's like, I didn't like it that much. I was like, what? The... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's, it's interesting. So mostly I'm the GM, but right. you know, some, sometimes not. I've got at least one person. A six year 5e <laughs> campaign. Adam, that yeah. is, that is a long time to be playing 5e. What it are you? Sure what is. What is your character? <laughs> Tell me your character. Right now, I am. So I've had two. Okay. Right, I'm back to my original character who had left at some point because a player who's this is there's drama, but uh, uh, the, a course. player that's I... no longer part of it was doing the murder hobo thing, and I was trying to play like a kind of good character, and eventually I just had to be like, he leaves the party. I'm making a new character. Like it doesn't work right. <laughs> with these two, and it was a yeah. Uh, so he left and then, uh, so then I, the mid, I'll, I'll introduce the midterm character, mm. which, uh, was a, a sorcerer named Mr. Mittens. Love it. He's a cat, cat man, <laughs> <laughs> did the wild magic thing, just kind of a chaos agent, but like not in, hopefully not in an annoying way, you know? Right. <laughs> not like, Ooh, I do whatever I want. Right. Just like, I'm so random. <laughs> <laughs> And then the other, the the current and previous one is a druid. Gotcha. Because I think the druids are fun. I think for five e, I have to do the the magic things, even though I get annoyed at all of the systems. Yeah. Of of magic and like tracking spells and spell slots, it's still fun to, like, have more buttons to push. I guess in that game. <laughs> yeah, I've I've played the fighter where I'm like, oh, I know what my turn is for the next five rounds. It's I right. swing my sword, and then I swing my sword again. <laughs> Ooh, I think I might swing my sword this turn. I'm thinking I'm going to swing that sword. Maybe twice. Could happen, but don't think too much about doing that. <laughs> don't get too excited. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would imagine with a campaign that goes for six years that there would eventually be some drama. I've only had, like, major drama with campaigns twice in my mm. time running, which I'm thankful for. But one of them happened literally in the second session, which I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for the fact that it happened really early on. So it was like, oh, we can just deal with this right away, as opposed to like we're three years in and we're like, oh, this has been lingering. This is a festering <laughs> wound that we didn't address. <laughs> yeah, that one was definitely the festering wound, but mostly like a real life one. Yeah. It's it's a whole thing. We don't need to get into. We don't that. have to get into the drama. <laughs> <if you're... laughs> but it was a lot of you know real life personal rubbing yeah. with a friend of mine, and it just spilled over. And, and also, he was in Europe uh. at the time, and so like he was playing at three a.m. and cranky. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be rough. It doesn't help. <laughs> Shout out to anybody that plays on somebody else's time zone because yeah. that's tough to do. That is very kind. Very kind. So, um, the last time I listened to the Tabletop Colin Show too, you were talking about some grasping nettles stuff. I'm really excited about grasping nettles. Is there what what's 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 happening with grasping nettles? I don't mean to like put you on the spot, but I'm just so excited for it. I want I want to play it so badly. It is on the cusp of release. You so know, exciting. but it's hard to finish yeah. things. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, we've got all of the, like, all of the art is done. All of the text is pretty much done. We're kind of, like, fiddling with the layout today, probably after this. Um, redoing the cover. The cover is, here's the current cover. And then there's Sasha's thumbnail of, of fixing Keep it. That. So the Keep that. Keep the, <laughs> the, the leaves are staying, but the... Sasha wasn't super pleased with like the way the banner mm. is right now. 
because uh, it does look nice, but it's also like something's weird here. Um, so I'm I'm sure that'll be cool. So yeah, it's it's nearly done, and then it'll just be a matter of printing, and I should probably collect shipping today or tomorrow <laughs> so oh, that yeah. I can just start sending them out the door immediately. So hopefully by next week or the week after, though there will be a release. Exciting. I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait. I, it will definitely be a a thing that I will use in my Psych of RPG classes. It's exactly the kind of game that I think my students will have a lot of fun with. Cool. Um, that's great. That's great to hear. <laughs> well, like I have, so I've tried like a bunch of different games for that class. It's mm-hmm. um, you know, they're it's students, and like I said, a lot of them have not played a role playing game. And it's a big enough group that I can't just do like a thing where I run a campaign, so to speak, with them. Right. There's like usually 12 to 15 students. So I have to break them up into groups. And I, I don't want to suddenly make somebody be a GM of a game if they've never right. even seen the concept of role playing before. <laughs> so I look to GM less games as the, the sorts of things to to use for that. Um, I used for the queen this last yeah, semester. Yeah, I, I was about to say that sounds like a perfect. It that was such engine. a hit. Like the students <laughs> loved for the queen so 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 much. Um, it's hard not to. Yeah, it's hard not to love that game if you play it. This and it's really um, good. it's it's also, you know, I I think the the like role playing buy in for it is light enough too because you don't know who you are you're kind of like figuring Mm. out who you are as you play it's very guided through questions so you're not like just playing out scenes and it's just like do a scene you're like what do you mean do a scene (laughs) um because i've done like i've done fiasco in the past and that has been fun for the students but that first that first yeah scene the first the first quarter of fiasco really is is tough it's really fun but it's cognitively front loaded as a game and again like unless i send them something ahead of time that says like like watch this play of fiasco so you (laughs) like get a sense of what this is a lot of them i'm just like i try my best i remember trying to do my best to explain what this get what like what a scene is and how to do it and then just be like okay everybody can go ahead and start i'll just kind of walk around and there's just that silence that immediate silence of everyone's like uh, uh, how the fuck do we do this? And there's, there's a thousand dice here. I'm supposed to make a character relationship character. Right. I don't get what I'm. What am I doing? So, but once it gets going, then they're like super into it. And then like right. by the end of it, they're shouting, they're screaming, they're laughing, and I'm like, it works. We just have to get past that initial extremely mm-hmm. uncomfortable part where we don't understand what this thing is yet. Um, so I'm always looking for games that can provide i think a little bit more structure than like what a fiasco does uh so like again that's why for the queen is so nice it's just like just flip a card answer a question we see this thing start to emerge with time and that's from what i've seen and heard about grasping nettles it sounds like exactly the kind of thing that i think will be cool for for my students yeah it kind of fits in there because it it starts very easy just you start saying like what's a genre of like story that we're looking for right we we doing sci-fi today? What are we doing today? And then once you land there, you flesh it out a little bit, just freeform. And then, yeah, it guides you through with the wheel, which, yeah, if you're watching and don't know, um, it is driven by like a rondel, if you know what a rondel is from <laughs> board games. Sick. Basically a circular game board <laughs> that there are three pieces that are moving around and on all of the 11 spaces are like 11 different game actions. So like create a faction, cause an issue in the community um but i can't think of any of the other ones because once you're in it you i'm looking i am looking at the wheel right now add new character intensify issue glimpse seasons change i put the uh i put the link to the kickstarter in chat for folks who want to to look at it yeah and the modern wheel looks much nicer than the one i did <laughs> that is on that <laughs> kickstarter page <laughs> Because I am not an artist, believe it or not, or at least not a visual artist is, I guess, more there specific. Right. <laughs> what we do is art, but not that kind of art. 
it's super cool. I like I remember watching the playthrough that you did on Twitch whenever that was um mm -hmm. a while back and just mm -hmm. being like this shit is cool. I I'm super into this. Uh plus you had a cool a good crew playing it so it was fun, you know. That always helps. Um, yeah, for sure. But I'm super excited for it. So I just I had I had to ask this morning just because again, <laughs> I I my own I want to get my own greedy grubs on it also because I'm teaching that class again in the spring and I'm like, can I use it? Can I start scheming and planning how to use it'll, this for my It'll definitely my be there by the spring for so, sure. <laughs> excellent. Hopefully I was hoping it would be out by today or like I would, it would be finished by today and I'd have good news here. Ah. Like, it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> it's hard to finish things. <laughs> It is hard. To There's finish. so many like little steps along the way that you forget about until yeah. you're there. And it's like, oh, I, this has to look nice. This has to like the text has to line up. This blah, blah, blah. I always yeah. I always forget that I have to make an itch page for it. And then I right, get to, like been... I'm ready to release. And I'm like, fuck. Ugh. Right. I, and I keep thinking like, <laughs> oh, as soon as I'm done with, you know, as soon as the internals are done and I'm hitting the print button. Right. Then it's over. But it's like, no, I, I gotta get the I gotta get the addresses. I gotta get the shipping money. I mm -hmm. it's not over. There's so much to do. Yeah. I am I'm still not free of Nova yet. I'm mostly free. I sent I I <laughs> I my our post office has like the lobbies open twenty four hours and they have just a giant bin to drop packages. So I dropped off like 150 more wow. Nova books this morning and I had shipped out like a hundred on Friday and I'm like, okay, just keep doing it in these batches and I'll eventually <laughs> be done with, done with it. Uh, and it doesn't help that we're moving in a month, a month from today. So like, I, I had a bunch of boxes brought into the house of books. It's like, <laughs> I need to get these out of here. So that right. <laughs> these, these have got to be to go. out of the way before I start packing. <laughs> right. For the rest of my life. Exactly. But um, yeah. So you're doing the fulfillment for Grasping Nettles yourself then? Yes. And the printing. Oh, you're there, you're printing it all at home too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've sick. got like a nice printer. I've got nice paper stocked up. That's awesome. Um, it's kind of a, it's a remnant of, when I did No Stone Unturned, mm. shoot, was that two years ago? An eon ago, how yeah. long? Um, between like whenever I was getting quotes from a printer and then actually ready to print, mm. the local printer I was using like were temporarily closed for COVID. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want to, because COVID had started at that point. Right. And I was like, I don't want to take my business elsewhere because they're doing the right thing. And so I just spent that money on a printer, and now I feel like I have to use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for grasping nettles, and then in the future, hopefully, any like smaller zine projects, I could just make myself. And it's it. I don't know. It's kind of nice. It's right. Kind of a fun experience. Are you making the rondel too? The the wait the the wheel. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna send the same size as the book. I'm gonna send like one just on cardstock uh -huh. to everybody that got it. Gotcha. But then also on. And this is a whole process on squares of cloth this size. Mm. It's convenient that I'm just at my work desk for this because it's good. all here. <laughs> um, we're going to screen print these. Hell yeah. Um, and sell them for extra because <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work and I need to sell that for extra. <laughs> I want to I wanna screen print one. Yeah, Can so I add hopefully... it on? Yes, yes. That is kind of what I'm working on. And I'm waiting for... I've been waiting for like the cover to be finished because yeah. I want to put, I want it basically to like wrap around oh. the book. So yeah. the back will have the cover on it and then you'll flip it and be able to play it on That's the other pretty side. Sick. Oh, there's a good question. Yeah. Is this process going to be part of not vlogmas? That would be an interesting thing just to see what that process is like. Yeah, probably. Some behind Once the we're, scenes. Once the digital file is done, I'll probably film that. That seems like a good time. And also an easy, easier video to make there than you go. trying to, to talk smart. <laughs> talk smart for 30 days or however long. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I would love to watch that. I, I don't know if I have the capacity in my own mind and body and soul to, to print things on my <laughs> own. Uh, I like to shunt off the responsibility, but it would be cool to learn. Cause maybe, maybe I have it built up in my head that it's way more complicated than it is. And so, or maybe it yes. is way more complicated. 
<laughs> it's not super complicated, but it is a lot of work because I don't have like a big old zine folder that you just put all the paper in and it goes, boop, here it right. is. Um, so there's definitely like a maximum order quantity that yeah. I could do this process for. Yeah. And so on the Kickstarter, I think we sold like 200 and that's a couple, that's like a rough week of folding. Oh, know? okay. Not yeah. doing it. If, if you sat down and did it all day, you could probably knock it out in a day, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but if, if I ever do a, a thing that I am thinking I'm going to print myself and I get to like 500, yeah. no, that's why I'm getting that printed somewhere, somewhere else. else. I can't do all that work. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. When I'm packing and stuff like that, I, I've got to listen to something. So I have been mm -hmm. listening, like, like I said, like last night I'm packing envelopes while watching your videos and listening to stuff like that. Cause I'm like, yeah, I mean, cause I, I do exactly like you said, where I'm just like, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get however much done as I can, but I'm not going to get all of it done. Like I never right. sat down and thought <laughs> I will pack every Nova shipment right now. <laughs> like that just wasn't going to happen. So I had yeah, to do it it's, at first. It's too like boring, boring in a nice way until it, until you've been doing it for an hour, yeah. two hours, and it's like, okay, I'm this is too much. But yeah. for a bit, it's nice to oh, here we go. Fold the paper, crease it with the bone folder. Fold the next one. Nice. Oh, I folded all of them, staple them. Eli says got... that this sounds like a serious hand cramp, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, that's why you got to break it up. Yeah. But I did get I did get like a big scary paper cutter that looks like I could chop my arm off with. Ooh. So I can, because they're square, but printed, obviously, on regular paper. Right. So I need to, I didn't want to, like, manually. I have one that's, like, you could do one zine at a time. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Nobody has time for that. <laughs> Nobody's got time for 200 zines one at a time. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That's cool. I, did, I didn't realize that you were doing the, the printing at home. That's neat. Are you excited about do that? I, yes it though like i'm excited to have done it like to have had right. the experience of doing it i'm a little bit dreading the in between but you know yeah, whatever it is what it is <laughs> you lacing up your clown shoes as will yopst says oh i am i am lacing up my clown shoes that's what the um the tactical... you mentioned that you listened yeah the tactical storytelling engine for forged in the dark games is somehow the name i've landed on it for now <laughs> does that have a good acronym to it i haven't actually thought it through the... no probably not <laughs> <laughs> no i think i mean my the original name i had did it was abstract tactical grid action resolution but then it has a worse name mm. it, and then you're calling it atgar which isn't that great of a <laughs> okay <laughs> right and it also I'm, I'm trying to like the the intention of calling it tactical storytelling engine is me trying to be like hey this isn't grid combat right this is uh, grids but different right yeah because <laughs> i i'm worried about two things happening whenever i market and then fulfill this one is grid people that love grid combat will get it be like oh i can do grid combat and blades in the dark and then be disappointed because that's not what it is Right. Or two, people that are allergic to grid combat being like, oh, I don't want this. It's grid right. combat for Blades in the Dark. And that's not what it is. Right. <laughs> so. Oh, I remember when I was listening again, like I wasn't like I'm driving, so I'm not able to like fully imagine it. And I was initially thinking like this, oh, we're kind of gridding this out. And then the second you started describing it as, so what does that mean as you move, like you move that one pip, oh, you know, using that pip to move over one or like, what is that? Like, how's that advanced things? I went, Oh, I see now. We're not moving around an actual space. This is a cool way to like like visualize the flow of combat mm -hmm. without actually visualizing the actual like spatial element of combat. Uh and the second I got that, I was like, well, that's really fucking cool. That is <laughs> <laughs> that is very very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's the type of thing that I feel like if people try it or watch it tried. Yeah. They'll get it and think it's cool but yeah. me telling you i'm putting grids and blades is gonna elicit a number of reactions that aren't quite the same right it's gonna be like i don't why right why are you doing that <laughs> well right that's what i was thinking too i was like blades doesn't have 
it's not that tactical with its fighting and like do i really need to track it all and then again exactly once i started hearing it i was like oh i very much see what adam is doing and this is very cool <laughs> so i but so yes that, that, that'll be interesting to try and market that to figure uh, out that that's like, definitely the, the marketing challenge yeah. is this is what it really is it's not <laughs> Just give set me a second. What you, yeah, give me a second, exactly. Like, uh. So that'll be Zine Quest? <laughs> That's going to be Zine Quest, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I want, uh, the, the ideal is to have, like, the legend has it in January for Make 100, probably. Oh, okay. oh is, that then, in, what, is that in January? Yeah. <sighs> Shit, I should get my card game done. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, tactical grid for Zine Quest. And then hopefully have both of them done before it starts yeah. so that I can do, I don't want to say real projects after that, but like bigger that can buy me some time to yeah. work on something bigger and cooler and are we'll you, see what happens. Are you brewing on something right now? Do you have something that you're like I, bigger? Yeah, I, you don't have to like show your cards. <laughs> by any I'm, I'm happy to. I don't know how long uh, you have. <laughs> I got nothing but time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I've got three things brewing pretty much, and I will see which one is first, okay. uh, <laughs> I guess. So the first one is a game called Burnt Champagne. It is a GM-less kind of troop style game based on shows like Succession and the old Dynasty, oh, yeah. Rest Development, where basically you are creating this rich family and doing an episodic game structure where you watch them be nightmares to each other because i mean we love that slop we hate the rich people but like mm -hmm. those shows are popular for a reason and it's because right. it's entertaining um so there's that i think that is shaping up to be pretty cool there is the game that the tactical storytelling engine came out of which i was it was originally like its own system until i realized like i could just slot this right into blades without changing much mm. maybe i should do that to like really refine it and then later I'll build the rest of the structure around it. Cool. So there's that. It's going to be like a cool sci-fi game. Um, big skill tree. Nice. Uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> you say looking off into the middle distance. Uh... <laughs> it's going to be so hard to design well, I think, is, is what the staring is. <laughs> I'm making it hard for myself. Uh... <laughs> But, you know, that is the fun in it. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you say convincing yourself. <laughs> and then the other big one uh, in process is a kind of revamp of my previous game, Uneasy Lies the Head, which is a Royal Court GM-less messy game, uh, which is going to look like a board game and feel like a board game. And you're going to be able to win or lose like a board game. Yes. But it's an RPG and fun and i'm really i'm going to try to pitch it so that board gamers get tricked into role playing mm -hmm. that's so how we get them <laughs> so it'll hopefully be fun to play if you're not doing any character stuff but then like a complete blast if you're getting into it and like setting scenes and yeah playing it like we would play it <laughs> very cool that's awesome so it's just kind of letting them all percolate and see what what kind of just jumps ahead or what what grabs you sort of thing yeah. yeah what grabs me seeing like how far along each of them are seeing how well like legend has it and tactical storytelling do and like how long right. i have <laughs> right where i could still pay my rent on that stuff sure because <laughs> yeah there's the infinite clock here at the beginning of um me trying to do this full time mm -hmm. the clock of i have an amount of money and it will run out and right. I'll have to go get a real job unless I succeed. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, yeah, it's all question marks. Cool. There's, like, a, there's a few folks who've been doing that, the the jumping to the, the full-time thing lately. It's, it's pretty cool. I've seen the, I've yeah. been seeing that trend. I think it can work. Yeah. I think, I think it's a, a thing that it's, it's going to be a lot of work, but... Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't want to say I'm like 100% confident I'm going to do it, but I know that I can do it. Yeah. And like, let's see if I execute well enough and don't have to go back to work. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I think you can do it. I believe in you. I, I hope so. I have never seen Succession. Should I watch Succession? Um, 
it's the first two seasons at least are good they're like not fun right you know it's it's not a fun show okay <laughs> everybody's a nightmare like so if you like that kind of stuff yeah because okay. <laughs> like you li- you ra- like you know you rattled off the examples and, and like arrested development i love but i feel like that, it is very different right, that's a that's the only one in the list that's like a comedy <laughs> right i'm like yeah i love so, arrested development <laughs> So like the the old dynasty is a soap opera, so that's right. also kind of fun. But Succession is secretly a soap opera because I mean it's messy and mm. and gross, but it's very serious. Right. Um. And there are funny bits, but like they're like mm-hmm, mm. kind of funny. They're not gotcha. comedy funny. <laughs> gotcha. We um we watch a lot of Korean dramas, and some Korean dramas can get into that almost soap opera degree of like just people are just fucking nasty to each other like truly <laughs> like villainous sort of things and mm-hmm. i i shut down when watching that i'm like i can't do this i can't watch people just be the like overtly cruel to one another oh then yeah probably don't watch but, succession. Uh, so it sounds like maybe <laughs> i shouldn't watch succession i like big, the happy goofy ones yeah big content warning for like the most abusive family to each other Same. well i guess not to each other because it's not how abuse works but the dad the old man is right. awful. <laughs> Sick. Very good. <laughs> I yeah. still will play Bird Champagne. I still will play it. Uh, that would be fun. I'll just pretend yeah, that, that I'm Job. I'll just pretend that I'm an Arrested <laughs> Development character and everybody else is in succession. <laughs> That's how I'll play. That's awesome. So you got a, you got a, a little bit of a packed 2022 then. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, again, we'll see like the success of each one will determine like how packed it has to be. <laughs> right. I'm curious if they do well enough, then I can spread it out, and that'll be nice. I'm curious for because, like I said, like I've seen a few folks who've been doing this idea of like going full time with this, and I'm like, are you planning on doing it mostly with like Kickstarter? Then is that your plan, like crowdfunding with these projects for? Cause, or is it, are you going to do like a, a Patreon like or Ko-Fi thing? Like what's your, I'm always <laughs> curious what people's plans are for this. Cause I know like Chris Bazette has their setup and mostly focuses on like some bigger Kickstarters, but also has a Patreon. So I'm just curious. So I think the, the first plan is the doing the Kickstarters. Um, I was planning bigger ones. Mm-hmm. I had like planning to, okay, by March, I want to do a bigger one, but then kind of legend has it and tactical storytelling engine presented themselves to me as like, hi, we're kind of smaller designs that you could do by then. Right. So why not? Um, But yeah, I would like to do one or two big Kickstarters a year and then have like smaller projects releasing. Yeah. Um, It's all a matter of the mystery of how well anything will do. And if I can pay my rent (laughs) without running out of savings. Um, The Patreon thing, I think, you know, I'll probably talk to you about that at some point because that does seem cool i think it would be nice to like have i it that's the kind of thing that i don't you, you know you don't know if it's going to work right. definitely until you just hit that button yeah <laughs> i had no sense of anybody was gonna give a shit about my patreon or not until i right. just like i'll just put it out there and see see if there's see like what happens. if yeah. my mom is like okay yeah sure and then it's just <laughs> my mom or if our other people are interested in seeing it <laughs> Yeah, so I I do, like, my plan for this video stuff is, like, obviously after the December challenge, or, you know, don't call it Vlogmas, is done, I'm going to try to keep making videos at a much slower rate. Mm. So I think that has potential for Patreon-style stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm not opposed to it, is the idea. (laughs) Gotcha. But I I don't think right now I'm ready for that, that sort of thing. Yeah. But maybe, yeah, maybe next year. Well, like I said, I always love listening to you talk about games. So if there's a way that you will just do that regularly <laughs> and I can be like, here, here's money. Give me more of you talking. Uh, that's I will throw dollars <laughs> at that for sure. I appreciate that. That's uh, I mean, that's reassuring to hear. <laughs> I think I think you are one of the one of the people that I, I truly do love listening to talk, uh, listening to you talk about games uh just i love the way that you think i love the way that you talk about things uh 
you have a great voice for it too, Adam. I gotta say, you got a great voice for <laughs> for video. So you got it all. You're checking all the boxes. <laughs> well, thank you. That's a big pile of compliments, uh, and I appreciate that. Now that I'm hopped, <laughs> now that I'm hopped up on coffee, I'm ready to just shower all this affection. <laughs> Sweet. Oh. Cool. Well, it sounds like you got some neat stuff going on. I'm excited for that. Yeah, me too. Good. I'm excited for it. And I think if I keep excited, if I keep being excited for it, it'll all turn out good. And then that'll make people want it. And that that's the whole, that's the plan. That's the cycle. Hi hype and excitement <laughs> is contagious. If you're excited about your stuff, other people get excited for it uh, as well. So right on, right on my dude. That's awesome. Well, I'm out of coffee. Is there anything else that you wanted to like talk about or chat about? Is there anything like at the top of your head? We kind of talked about basically everything I'm doing. Sweet. So, no, I guess not. What's going on with you? <laughs> I don't need to... Not much. Let's redo it, but you could. But talk now about I'll all your go stuff. through my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally just packing Nova. Like that mm. is my life right now. For RPGs, it is Nova and packing it i was like in the middle of working on other projects and then two giant waves of boxes arrived at my doorstep <laughs> and i was like well i will no longer be working on my mark out hack or my other stuff until i get these out of my house right um but i you know i so i'm a i'm a teacher so i have winter break coming up next week is my last week for the term so once that hits that's my design time. That's my time to just like, okay, I have literally no other obligations. The Nova books are out the door. Let's get nice. to this. Which uh, I have suddenly, though, become obsessed with working on my non-RPG project. So, like, <laughs> that time is going to hey. be devoted to a card game. Especially now that I know that January is make 100. And now I'm going to get overly ambitious because I know that. <laughs> and the Nova faction term. Those are the, the next things I'm working on. Those are probably the things that I release to people on Patreon next. And I'm working on Drifter's layout. That's my other thing, is I'm teaching myself to, like, appreciate layout more. Cool. Yeah. I, I've I, seen a couple of the stills. I think, I mean, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. It is, like, I I am sharing the cooler-looking pages. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> They're not all like that, uh -huh. but uh, it is, it's one of those things like I, you know, when I first started doing this and I, my friend Mike did the layout for my first RPG with score. And I was like, this is literally magic. Like I, I will never understand how any of this is done. And now I'm forcing myself to at least understand how it's done. Not so that I could replicate that, but just so that I can just like get it. Layout streams. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Navi, you were mentioning like you were gonna consider doing layout streams. Navi, you should do that because I would watch the hell out of you doing layout. Navi from a couple of Drakes is here, and Ooh. I love their, I love their layout, the, the layout that the, that you two come up with. So, my layout streams, Navi, yeah, would just... be a nightmare to watch. It would be a nightmare because I don't do any of the things that you're supposed to do, like, uh, master pages and all of that stuff. <laughs> I don't do any of that. I... <laughs> So you would watch it and you'd be like, what the fuck is he doing? Right, why? just aggravated in the chat. <laughs> why, why is he making this so much harder for himself? <laughs> so um, I might, I think I'm, I think I'll do a slight kind of layout stream just because I have to update the print and play file for my card game. Because I want to send it out to people this week before PAX so that, because I'm planning on, playing it at PAX and collecting some more playtest data, but I also want other people to play it. And I gotta update that P and P pile or file. So I think I might like just stream myself doing that and explain what the game is while doing it. So that I can talk cool. to people about what the game is while I'm fiddling with things that I have no idea how it actually works. Again, it's all magic. It really is. I'm also kind of at that tier of yeah, I know how to use Affinity Publisher like fairly well, but I don't have. I have an eye for what looks bad. I could tell you, no, that's no good. Right. But I don't have the I don't have the ideas on how to make it look good. <laughs> Absolutely none. Like I'm I'm starting to appreciate like just a nice clean looking layout. Like 
looks good and i can i can like i can get that but like i've you know of course i've doomed myself by having people like jam make layouts for me <laughs> yeah. so i look at this nova's, I'm like, no fucking chance that i'll ever be able to do this <laughs> nova's layout is a little out of control yeah so <laughs> it's pretty cool i've made the foolhardy choice to hire people <laughs> who are really good at layout and then i expect myself to try and do that i'm like i don't get it i don't get there's it. nothing wrong with switching back and forth like yeah. you could do the the maximalist nova layout and then jump to a a simple like clean if because if you nail the clean that's yeah. the hard part is there's like a fine line between this looks like a google doc and okay you chose the right fonts right you know there's nice little headings i know what i'm doing in this book yeah i think like so drifters is mostly going to just be interesting in like color choices but not in like a bunch of things going on on the page and then when i do the light beacon edition it's going to be very clean but it's going to look good because like the original light was also a clean template and everything mm -hmm. so it's like that'll do that it'll look a little bit nicer um that's my plan so that's me that's me in a nutshell adam cool great yeah i'm excited to hear about this card game it's pretty cool not gonna lie it's pretty <laughs> fun uh it is exactly the kind of game that i've been wanting which is a like pvp card battler game that ends in like 10 minutes 15 okay. minutes max so you can do like round after round after round sort of thing i'm into that yeah. as opposed to longer things you don't want to be like playing magic where it takes 10 minutes to do like a turn unless you're super into it and know every you card know in the entire it. collection right. like wait what are you doing let me see that i had paragraph that, i did a draft <laughs> like last year or no not, it was not that last it was like three years ago uh and I remember I hadn't played in years and I'm just sitting down and my opponent is doing stuff. And I'm just like, I'm going to have to just trust that you are doing this right because I have <laughs> no fucking clue how this works. Like I, yeah, none of these keywords me mean anything to me. <laughs> right. And I will play a mountain, your turn. And then they do a bunch of stuff I'm like, interesting, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> That's stuff, stuff going on there. Yeah. Dungeon Mayhem actually, Jeremy is a big inspiration for this game that I've, working on because dungeon mayhem is exactly that it's just super fast fun wizards it is made by the wizards of the coast but we'll we'll forgive them for that uh neat beans well adam this has been a blast uh thank yeah. you so much for coming and chatting with me about of course thanks about for all your me. stuff you got some really cool things going on um where can people i know we like threw your links and stuff out earlier we mentioned Merle, but like where can people find you where should people uh find you or your cool stuff online uh so i'm on twitter at adam e bell um i'm on twitch also at adam e bell if you want to watch the tabletop Colin show um i'm on <laughs> basically anywhere you can find people if i'm on there i'm on there as adam e bell um so that's my itch adam e bell.itch.io or adam e bell .games. Um, yeah, if you go to the, the, my Twitter, I think my pinned tweet is you can still pre-order Graspy Nettles if you didn't get the Kickstarter. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, and then you'll be in that first wave. Or you could just wait until it's out and buy it then. I don't, I don't mind. Whatever you want to do. Wait, I have to ask you now. Do I need to go there to pre-order the, the screen printed thing? Should I do that now in like the pre-order phase? Or is that something I can do post? Uh, it's not up. It's okay. not there yet. <laughs> okay. I just want to make it sure that be, I get it for sure. <laughs> I'll make sure to have it. Like my plan is to, I need to this one square. Cause it's the only square that we have. sewed right now I need to get the screen created. And then I want to screen print this one. So I can take product photos and put it up. Nice. And also make sure I know how to screen print. Cause oh, that uh, too. I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to do it in theory, but yeah, I need to do yeah. it in practice. Sick. Um, so yeah, as soon as this cover is finished, then I can create a screen yeah. out of the cover and also out of the wheel, and then it'll be, hell yeah, up, and you can get it there. I'll That's tweet about awesome. it. It'll it'll be there before I send out the like, hi, uh, give me your address and pay for shipping, please, and right. it'll be in like the same spot. Sweet on Ko-Fi. I just throw the I just threw the Ko-Fi link up in chat as well for folks who want to pre-order Grasping Nettles. Ooh. Do it if you miss the campaign. Trust me, this game rock socks. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Uh, well, Adam, again, like I said, I'm really bad at goodbyes. I usually ramble and just make them way longer than they need <laughs> to be. So 
we'll wrap this up. This has been this has been super fun. Thank you so much for chatting with me and joining me for yeah. coffee break. Thanks for having me. And folks, everybody, uh, hope you had a good time as well. There is not going to be a coffee break next Sunday because I will be at PAX uh, unless I oh, can yeah. somehow manifest a <laughs> a stream at PAX. But I, it might just be me and Adam Vass like actually getting coffee in a coffee shop, like trying to wake up for PAX that day. So uh, we will. Adam and I are driving to PAX together, so that'll be a very fun adventure. Um, hey, if you want to, if you want to stop in Pittsburgh on your way there, is is it a long? I, way? I don't understand. It it where is a long way. Are. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I think. I I mean I I believe it is, but uh, you know, let me know. I am not going to. PAX. I decided if I could find the the booster shot before PAX, maybe yeah. I would go. Uh, but I. Then they opened it to everybody, and now all the appointments are gone. Yeah. <laughs> so. I am mine is not tomorrow, ready for it. so nice. Uh, not looking forward to that, and looking forward to it at the same time. <laughs> right, it'll uh, be nice to have the protection, but wow, feeling like crap for a day. Everybody who I know who's gotten it has just had <laughs> a hell of a time with it. So, uh, again, this is the last week of the term, so I just got to get through this week. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, that. So, just wanted to let everybody know, no coffee break. Um, uh, next week, but there uh, we'll come back uh, the week after, and then the next one is like the day after Christmas, which I'm around, so I just got to find somebody who wants to chat with me the day after Christmas. Uh, so we'll let you all know about that in the future. But it's not about me. Go hang out. Uh, who's my next guest? Oh my God, who is my next guest? I wrote it down somewhere. That's a really good question. Oh, it's Cat! It's Cat who is in chat, right? Of course, I can't believe. It. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about like blazing him and the AP uh, that is coming up for that, the actual play, which is gonna be the first actual play of a Lumen game, which I'm nice. So like, my mind is blown that that is happening. <laughs> uh, so, hell yeah, it's gonna be. We did an interview recently and talked about it, so I'm excited. Anyway, like I said, Adam, these goodbyes are so long and drawn out. So <laughs> <laughs> now we will actually say goodbye. Uh, thank you all so much. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is you are. And we'll talk mm -hmm. to you later. Bye. Goodbye.